name Rachel, I create colourful paintings and I make tutorials so that you can learn how to paint them too. Today I'm painting this colourful flamingo. I absolutely loved painting this, I find flamingos really cute anyway, and experimenting with the bright pink tones of the feathers was so much fun. This is a shortened version of the video, but I have also made a full length step by step tutorial where I tell you all of the paints and colours that I use, and the video is in real time so that you can paint along with me from start to finish. This full length tutorial is available on my Patreon along with all of my other art tutorials and videos. I'll add a link in the description of this video, so if you want to watch the full video just click on that. I started this painting by working on the background first. I usually start with the background for my animal paintings. There's a few reasons why I do this. The main reason is that the animal is in front of the background, so by painting the background first I can then paint the feathers or fur over the top to really bring the animal forward. Another reason is that I love to create a contrast between the animal and the background, so having the background in place when I start the animal really helps me to choose the right colours to make sure that the animal stands out. I decided on a green background for this painting because I think it will contrast nicely with the pink flamingo feathers. I love learning about colour theory and implementing it in my art, as it really helps to make the painting pop and look really colourful, which is what I love. So because the complementary colour to pink is green, that means that there will be a high contrast between the flamingo and the background. I also want it to look almost like there are tropical leaves in the background behind the flamingo, so this was another reason for this colour choice. I love to create texture in an original painting, so I used thick brush strokes with lots of paint. This does mean that each layer takes longer to dry, so I had a bit of waiting time in between the layers, but I really think it's worth it to be able to see the texture in the finished painting. Choosing the right reference image is really important and it can make a huge difference to the final outcome of the painting. It helps to get your proportions right and to know where the colours and highlights and shadows need to go. You can find inspiration from your own photos, wildlife photography, or even online resources. Just make sure that if you want to sell your work, that you have the rights to work from the photo that you choose. I have uploaded the reference photo that I used for this flamingo painting to the full length tutorial on my Patreon, so that you can download it and work from it too. I always sketch the animal onto my canvas before I start painting. It's so helpful to have this as a guide, so you know that you'll be adding paint into the right places. There's nothing more annoying than spending time painting something really well, but then realising that you've painted it in the wrong place. I don't add too much detail in my sketches, usually just the basic outline, but it helps me massively to make sure that I have the correct proportions in my final painting. I wanted the flamingo's feathers to be more of a peachy shade of pink, so I used a mix of reds, whites and oranges to get the right shades of paint. Sometimes I work with the colour straight out of the tube, but a lot of the time I like to mix my own colours to make sure that I can get the perfect shade. I wanted to have warmer tones in the top left hand section of the canvas, where the sun is shining, and cooler tones in the lower right hand section, so I used more yellow paints in the top half, and cooler pinks and purples in the bottom half. Knowing and understanding the light source in your painting is so important and it can make such a huge difference to the overall piece. I love to emphasise the light and increase the contrast, so that the highlights are really strong and you can tell where the sun is shining onto the animal. This works really well with my style of painting as the extra contrast helps to make the colours look even more saturated and I love to paint colourful animals. But even if you prefer to use more realistic tones it still really helps to understand the light and you can still follow along with this tutorial. I try not to focus too much on specific details when I'm painting, and instead try to focus on the overall effect. For example, I don't paint each feather individually to make sure it's perfect, I just get a large paintbrush and flick it back and forth to get the impression of feathers. Using this technique with a mixture of light and dark shades of paint really helps to give the effect of fluffy feathers without spending hours trying to paint them with a tiny paintbrush. Up close they may not look perfect, but when you look at the painting as a whole, it looks just like feathers and it takes a lot less time. Working in layers also really helps with this, blocking in the colours first and then building up the texture and contrast as you go.
I've said it before, but I think that birds are one of my favourite types of animals to paint. They're just so naturally pretty and colourful, and I love painting their feathers. I love experimenting with colour choices, and birds seem to give me so much freedom with this, which makes the process even more enjoyable. Let me know if you have any ideas of birds that you'd like me to paint next. I love the colour palette that I used for this painting. The yellows, pinks and greens all together give off a tropical feeling which works really well with the flamingo. I get so much enjoyment from choosing different colour palettes for all of my paintings. I always do this when I plan the painting before I start. I always plan my paintings by figuring out the composition and colours before I start the painting process as it gives me more confidence that the painting is going to work. I have created a video explaining how I plan my paintings, which I'll link to in the description of this video, as I find that it helps so much in creating a good painting. I really hope you enjoy watching the process of this colourful flamingo painting. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this.